While ships are the main draw of Star Citizen for most, ever since procedural planets were introduced, the first person aspect of the game has grown to encompass many new possibilities. FPS armor has subsequently grown in importance along with this inclusion of planetary environments, the player status system, and the constant addition of new FPS weapons. With all this, there are plenty of details surrounding the armor to understand as of now. Today we are going to take a look at those details and try to get a grasp of what armor will mean for you in Star Citizen. I'm your host, Space Tomato, and I'd like to thank you for coming to my tomato talk. Now in order to understand what Star Citizen will be doing with armor, you need to look at what it will be doing with weapons. The relationship that specific armors have with various weapon damage types is a trademark of RPGs, so it is certainly nothing new. But it seems the developers might be aiming for more modularity than the standard way of doing things, where, say, the whole body receives negative 5% ice damage or negative 10% tomato damage. The various weapon types will provide tachyon damage, kinetic damage, and electron damage, among others. And as we've seen with the recent reveal of the new lightning weapons, damage types can be combined to create various effects. And while any manufacturer might make these weapons, certain manufacturers are more well known in lore for certain weapon types, like Klaus and Werner, or the Lightning Bolt Company, who surely comes off as pretty self-explanatory. All that being said, let's take a look at FPS armor. Now as it stands, Star Citizen splits up its armor into three categories, light, medium, and heavy. This is pretty basic and doesn't provide much context or even a reason to delineate differences between armor contained in the same category. This is all due to change into a more dynamic system that is based on several attributes in addition to the damage resistance mentioned before. Each suit of armor is going to have its own power rating, specific signature, inventory capacity, life support rating, movement speed, and radar capabilities. They are planned to be as full-featured and customizable as your ship, minus the quantum drive and giant size 7 turrets. These customizations will be possible with the inclusion of subcomponents, something we've seen worked on for ships but haven't really heard mentioned regarding armors before. This really nails home the idea that armor you wear will be powered, not a passive suit. It will be something that you need to monitor while you're out exploring deep space or dangerous planets, and that will all factor in with the player status system introduced in early 2020. Now you might be thinking, Ugh, Tomato, I don't want a survival game, that's just annoying. Just remember, if you're in a breathable atmosphere or in normal temperature ranges, you won't really have to worry about it much. And on planetary surfaces, even with regular armor, you have a lot of wiggle room when in extreme temperatures. Otherwise, in space, well, we weren't really built for vacuum, and thus, we need a little help getting around. I'm sure you'll be able to get a nice, juicy, long-lasting battery that will keep you good to go for several hours at a time. These are just additional bits of gameplay to continue building on the Star Citizen philosophy of player choice. Of course, outside of the armor classes, you'll also have specific roles for each suit. You'll have mining suits, exploration suits, combat suits, bounty hunting suits, etc. So there will be two separate classifications for each armor suit you choose, which should provide a vast matrix of armor for the developers to create for players. And with all these different types of armor, obviously there need to be different designs. So at the convention, we got to see some new, more utilitarian style armor sets, which are meant for the less shooty, pew pew style gameplay that many people are so excited for. 
Clearly, the goal is to use these various new designs to help players understand what the functionality of the armor should be at a glance. While discussing this armor, one of the devs, Jeremiah Lee, spoke towards creating and classifying armor so that players weren't just wearing armor for the looks, but also for the functionality. This is something they mentioned in several other panels at CitizenCon and I think hints a bit at where the overall mindset is in terms of development moving forward. Now, we're going to switch gears and discuss a big topic introduced at last CitizenCon and one of the more major features added to the game in the past several months. Climate change. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. But really, we are going to take a look at climate and how it can affect your armor choice. Humidity, temperature, and wind speed will all factor into what conditions you can survive in any specific suit of armor. Whether that be an exploration suit, an unsealed suit, a flight suit, or even maybe nude? And they don't stop there. They're also looking to take into account an average of the various parts of your body where you lose temperature at a faster rate due to surface area. This means there will be a bit of a strategy to what part of your body you might allow armor to be damaged or removed. Given these extreme temperatures, you will see impacts on your gameplay when you reach the outer limits of survivability. Of course, this will also be affected by things like dehydration, hunger, and sleep deprivation, but to less extent and in a much more delayed manner. Now, I'm going to briefly touch on the discrepancies between concept and in-game armor, because it was an interesting talk back at CitizenCon, and many backers know that the armor changes quite a bit from what we've seen in concept to what we get in the game. While the armor may look very good and like exactly what we want, oftentimes the body shape, proportions, and the size of the armor just don't work with the in-game model. And you have to remember, in Star Citizen, just like some other games, we are not simply referring to the armor as the player character. The actual characters need to be able to fit into the armor dimensions without clipping or distorting the player model. So, matching in-game to concept can be very difficult, but they do what they can. Next, we're going to look at the helmet experience in the game. Now, typically in the engine, when you equip an item, it will pop onto you. The graphics are incredible here. That's amazing. Yeah. Really good stuff. Really great job, Jeremiah. That's what we want. That's <laughs> what we want. We want to give you guys That's our a very good right experience. <laughs> So yeah, typically these things just pop onto the player, and normally this is fine. The gameplay aspect is totally fine here, um, but we want to give you, you know, something better in the best damn space sim ever. It's got to feel like it's your helmet, right? Jokes aside, this is a great representation of something that can be small, but I think a lot of people appreciate in terms of gameplay. It's not new to Squadron 42, the single player game being developed, but it's something they've decided they'd like to include in Star Citizen as well. One of the ideas that is new is the idea of decoupling the helmet from the head so that, like with certain types of real-life helmets, the head will actually move around inside of the helmet, allowing for more natural motion and better visibility when allowed. The helmet will also always have a state it is in based on how you interact with it, this will allow the helmet to move or interact with you and the outside world in various ways based on its current state. It will also have geometry presets based on the character it is on or whether it is on a stand or a rack, much like some technologies we've seen in various media. I wonder if armor will do this as well and how that will interact with things like bionic legs and arms. What we've seen so far is still a little clunky and definitely needs some polish. They also really need to improve the interaction system to make it more streamlined and player friendly, as well as allowing key bindings to perform all these actions rather quickly. But this is some good progress, I'm glad they have this working in a game environment already. And while we still haven't gotten more information about the armor and helmet systems in the last 7 months, we have seen new environmental effects shape the armor we wear in extreme conditions. 
and I look forward to the expanded functionality of the system. And that is it for this recap. It was long and very detailed, but I still skipped some parts of the original video I took this information from. So if you would like more info, definitely go check that out, it'll be in the video description. If you really enjoyed this, please like it, share it, watch it again, play it to your baby, whatever you feel the need to do to express gratitude. And come join my Discord community where you can talk, share, and play with other Star Citizen fans. And of course, make sure to subscribe to Space Tomato for more Star Citizen content.